Amen. Wasn't that wonderful? <clears throat> First Samuel chapter 1 this morning. First Samuel chapter 1. Uh, thank you, Miss Betty, for being used of the Lord. What a great service it's been. What a great day it is to be in God's house. I don't know about y'all, but I'm thankful that I'm a member of Promised Land Missionary Baptist Church. I'm proud to be part of this church family, but most of all, I'm proud to be a child of the King. And I'm glad I got a shepherd that watches over me. He knows every turn. He knows every thought. He knows everything. He knows it all. And I promise you, when you think and when you realize that you don't know it all, remember this, he knows it all. You can trust in him today. 1 Samuel chapter 1, in spirit of our baby dedication today, the Lord laid this sermon upon my heart. And this sermon is for parents. This sermon is for mamas and daddies. But this sermon is for everybody, okay? And, uh, and I hope and pray that God uses this message uh, to bless your heart as he used it to bless mine. I'll begin in verse 20. In 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 20 it says, Wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. And the man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Hannah went not up, for she said unto her husband, I will not go up unto the child but until the child be weaned, and then will I bring him, that he may appear before the Lord, and there abide forever. And Elkanah her husband said unto her, Do what seemeth thee good, tarry until thou have weaned him, only the Lord establish his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she weaned him. And she and when she had weaned him, she took him up with her, three bullocks, and one ephah of flour, the bottle of wine, and brought him into the house of the Lord in Shiloh, and the Lord and the child was young. And they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here praying unto the Lord. Now notice what she said. For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshipped the Lord there. Dear Heavenly Father, bless the reading of your word. Dear Lord, I ask for power from on high. Lord, I need your touch this morning. Lord, I need the anointing of your Holy Spirit to preach this. Not in the way that I have planned, but in the way that you have designed. Lord, I pray that we would open our hearts and that we would allow this to mold us and to make us what you'd have us to be. Lord, I thank you for babies. I thank you for children. God, you blessed me with three, and I'm a blessed man. Thank you for the responsibility. Lord, they are a blessing, but they are a responsibility. Help me, Lord, to be the daddy that would bring you honor and glory. Lord, I pray that you give me grace to raise my children in your nurture and admonition. And Lord, as we raise these families up to you today, I pray that your protective hand would be upon every one of them and every one of these children. And Lord, every child that is in this place, even though they're young today, even though they don't know they're sinners, Lord, there's going to come a day that they're going to realize they're a sinner. And I pray every one of them would fall on their face and call out to a holy and righteous God and be saved. Lord, I pray there's not a child in this place, a child in this neighborhood, a child in this town that would grow up without your Son, Jesus Christ, as their personal Savior. Help us to preach. Help us to lead. Help us to teach as you design. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. A mother before the Lord. A mother before the Lord. The story that we've read this morning is one of my favorite. And when I begin to think about being a parent, being a mama, being a daddy, I automatically go to Hannah. And y'all know the story of Hannah. And Hannah was a barren woman, was not allowed to have children uh, most of her life and most of her womanhood. And everybody else was having children and this was something that she was burdened with. This was something that she had upon her heart. And every day she had that burden, I want a child. I want a child. 
I want a child. My wife has that same burden. She has three, and she still wants another one. I tell her all the time, my quiver's full of them. I don't need another one of them. But it's amazing the natural desire that he puts in the heart of a woman to have a child. And if it wasn't for that heart, there probably wouldn't be many children here if it was up to the men. But God blessed this woman with this desire. This was a godly woman. This was a woman who loved the Lord, who went up every year to offer sacrifices. She was dedicated. She was faithful. She loved the Lord, but she had an empty spot in her life and in her heart. And she prayed one day to the Lord that God would bless her and answer her prayer and give her a child. Well, the day that came that God blessed her with a child, and I love this story so much, is because we find a mama that was not afraid to take her child to church. We find a mama that was not afraid to dedicate her child to the Lord. We see a mama who loved the Lord so much, and yes, she loved her son. And yes, she loved young Samuel, but God was first in her life. And she, she was such a godly woman that she raised her son in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And I'm telling you, there's something special about a godly mama. There's something special about a mama who's willing to get their kids and put them in the hands of the Lord. There's something special about a mama who's willing to pray every day for their little ones. I'm telling you, God blessed me with a godly mama. And I thank God for godly mamas. And I thank the Lord for godly daddies. And there is nothing more precious than a man and a woman to take the child that God gave them and realize that God and God alone gave them that child. And that they're going to raise them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And that's where this woman was. And I'm telling you, this woman was not scared to go before the presence of the Lord. And I'm telling you, I'm glad that God gave me a mama that was brave enough to go before the throne room of God every day of my life. And I'm telling you why I'm standing where I'm standing is because I got a mama and daddy that wasn't afraid to go before the presence of the Lord. And I'm telling you, if my children, if I don't kill them first, it will be by the grace of God because I've gone to the Lord and I've said, God, here they are. Help me be a better daddy. Help Lacey be a better mama. Help us to be parents that raise these kids. Who cares? Who cares if they can swing a baseball bat? Who cares if they can shoot a basketball? But God, I pray that my kids would love you and my kids would serve you and my kids would admire you and that the love of their life would be you and you alone. That the priority and the preeminence of their life would be Jesus and Him crucified. As this woman came before the Lord, we see three things. Number one, she acknowledged her blessing. Anytime, parents, that you go before the Lord, acknowledge your blessing. Child of God, do not be afraid to acknowledge the blessings of the Lord. God has blessed us. To Him be glory and dominion and power. Praise His holy name. Mamas, be willing to praise the Lord for your babies. Daddies, be willing to praise the Lord for your babies. There are times that there are burdens, but at the end of the day, they are a blessing from God. And God gave you these children to Him be power and honor and glory. Notice verse 27. She's had this child and she's, she has come to offer sacrifices. And the very first thing out of her mouth, she said, For this child I pray. Isn't it amazing when your heart's desire is set upon something and you give your desire to God and God answers your prayer? And the first thing that she pointed out, God, you answered my prayer. I'll never forget when me and Lacey first got married and we were pastoring. Well, she wasn't pastoring, but I was pastoring out in Texas. We were young, scared to death, but God put a burden on our hearts to have a baby. And we began to pray that God would bless that burden. And it wasn't long. Boy, you better be careful what you pray. It wasn't long. I had three of them little dudes running around. <laughs> and that burden that was there, but I'm going to tell you something. Every one, we asked for them. And God answered our prayer. Every, all three of those children are an answered prayer. God blessed us. 
Kalen is an answer to prayer. Connor is an answer to prayer. Kennedy is an answer to prayer. Them three are not a burden. Them three are not a nuisance. They are, they are a blessing from the Lord. The only reason that I have these children because God allowed me to have these children. If God didn't want me to have them, then I wouldn't have them. By God's grace and God's mercy and God's greatness, he allowed me to have three children. And she came before his presence and said, God, thank you for answering my prayer. Thank you for giving me children. Thank you for blessing me. But I want you to notice what she acknowledged. And she acknowledged her misery without Samuel. I want you to go back in verse 10. It says, And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. You see, this was something that, that really burdened this woman because she wanted a child, and she was barren. And you see, in this day, if you did not have children, it appeared to other people, the reason you don't have children is because you're not living right. You see, it was something that a woman, if she could not have a child in this day, it was something, a, a, a look, a thought from the community that this woman was cursed, that God was punishing this woman somehow. And even in the book of Luke, Elizabeth was an old lady when she began to have John the Baptist. And if you remember, uh, she said, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. You see, with these women that did not have children, people looked at them like they were cursed and they were not blessed. But you see, Hannah was a woman of the Lord. Elizabeth was a woman of the Lord. And they wanted everybody to know that they are blessed. And that God was in their life. And that God was big in their life. And Hannah's desire is, oh God, if people could see that you would give me a child in my old age, that they would see that I am a blessed woman. That they would see you big in my life. And she realized that without these this young boy, I'd be miserable. She acknowledged her misery. And I'm going to tell you something. I love Lacey and I love our life, but our life would be miserable without our three precious blessings. My life would be miserable without the blessings of these children. And some people say, oh, children are a nuisance and a hindrance. And there's people that act that way and they treat their kids that way. But child of God, don't ever treat your children that way. Because I'm telling you, without them, your life would be miserable. Without them, your life would be empty. And you thank God every day for every one of them. No matter how many hair you got to pull out. Kennedy or Kaylin looked at me the other day and said, Daddy, your head is full of gray hairs. And I said, and you put every one of them there. It becomes a burden sometimes, but oh, what a blessing. Oh, what a blessing because the misery that I would have without them. But not only did she acknowledge the misery, but she acknowledged the true blessing that they were. Hold your place there and look in Psalm 127. Psalm 127. And I love this psalm. And I, I think this is something that we need to remember and, and listen to this morning in verse 3. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is His reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full. And I can tell you, I'm a happy man because my quiver's full this morning. <laughs> But in this day, the more children that you had, the more it was seen that you were blessed of the Lord. Don't get any ideas, Lacey. But in this day, if you had a lot of children, that meant you were a blessed person. And the more children that you had, the more blessed you were of the Lord. Because these children would become a blessing. This was hard days. And the more children they had, the more servants they had, right? I'm picking but they had these workers and they had these children and they had one another and it was a blessing. And the more you had, the, the greater you were blessed. And the Bible says, happy is the man. Can I say something this morning? I don't understand how somebody could physically hurt their own children. I don't see how somebody could, could physically abuse or sexually abuse their own children. I don't know how you just leave them somewhere and don't care for them. I don't see how you could just leave them in the house to tend to themselves. I don't see because we are blessed to have these children. 
And if you have three kids or one kid or, or, or 20 of them, love every single one of them. And you listen to me this morning. Every little boy and every little girl needs a daddy and they need a mama. And they need a daddy and a mama who is willing to serve the Lord and love them every day of their life. Every kid ought to know how it feels to be loved. Every kid ought to know how it feels to have a daddy willing to go down and hug them. And we've got this whole prideful thing. Well, you know, as a daddy, we can't show much emotion. Men, get over it. <laughs> love that child. You got one shot of being a daddy. You be the best daddy that God's ever called. Amen. You be the best daddy there's ever been. You be willing to hug them. You be willing to kiss them. Show them love. Tell them you love them. I've heard people say, well, my dad's never told me that he loved me. That's wrong. If you love your child, tell them. They need to hear somebody say, I love you. And if they don't hear from mama and daddy, Lord have mercy, they're going to have a rough life. Tell them, mama, daddy, hug them, love them, kiss on them, spend every day, every hour with them, invest all you have in them. And I feel like this, I got one shot at being a daddy. And one day I'm going to stand before an almighty God and I'm going to have to answer for what kind of daddy I was. And I don't want to stand there and he'll say, Josh, you didn't even take time for them. You wouldn't even kiss them. You wouldn't even tell them you love them. You wouldn't even go out and throw the baseball with them. You wouldn't even spend time with them. You know, growing up, some of the most memorable things in my life is the time that my dad would get down on the floor with me and wrestle. Little bitty things, but some kids don't have that. Some of the most memorable times in my life when I got to go in the yard with my daddy and throw the baseball. Spend the time. Love on them. Love on them. You realize they're a blessing. And you say, well, I don't have time. i got to go make a living. Your kids are more than, that, than your living. May I tell you, your kids are more important than a job. Your kids are more important than a lifestyle. Your kids should go before all of your likes. Put your children first after the Lord. Amen? Jesus is first, but understand that your kids deserve to be a priority of your life. Notice back in our text, if you're with me, say amen. amen. Back in our text, it says in verse 28, Therefore also have I lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. Number two, she brought her gift to the Lord. We find in verse 24 that she brought what was, what was required to sacrifice. You see, when these uh, women would have children, they would go and bring these sacrifices to offer for themselves, to purge themselves. And then they would bring an offering to the Lord to show God how happy they are that, that He give them to them. We see this woman coming and doing and fulfilling her, her religious priority here. But we also see her fulfilling the vow that she made unto the Lord. Sometimes we get so low and so down that we begin to make deals with God. And this woman, in a low time of her life, she made a deal with the Lord. And I'm telling you, if you make a deal with the Lord, you better be ready to fulfill that deal. And if you make deals with God and vows of God, you better keep them. I want you to notice what she said in verse 11. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man-child, then will I give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. You know what that no razor come upon his head? That's the Nazarite vow. And she's basically saying, God, I, if you give me a child, I'm going to give him back to you so that he can be used strictly for the honor and glory of your kingdom. That's the vow that she made. So when it was time to come offer the bullocks and the rams and the wine and all of this, she didn't just bring all of these things. She brought her vow unto the Lord. The greatest gift she had unto the Lord was her son. And you know what she did with her son? Her greatest gift, she gave it right back to him. And said, God, I love you and I adore you so much that I'm going to give you back what you give me. You say, how in the world could a mama do that? How in the world, may I tell you, mamas, every one of us ought to give our children back to the Lord. 
Hold on, let me say that again. Every one of us ought to give our children back to the Lord. Every one of us ought to give our kids back to Him. God gave them. God gave them to you. And you wouldn't have them without the Lord. And every one of us needs to give our children back to the Lord. One of my greatest gifts that I have in my life are my three blessings. What do we do with what God has given us? We give it back to Him. In Malachi, the question is asked, Will a man rob God? I guarantee you he would. And how many times have we robbed him with some of the greatest gifts that he's ever given us? What's the greatest thing God's ever done for you? If you're a parent, it ought to be your children. And it ought to be your spouse. Have you ever given them back to the Lord? Have you ever just said, God, here they are? God, I don't care if they become rich. I don't care if they become athletes. All I care is that they're used for your honor and your glory. Oh, we need mamas and daddies willing to give their babies back to Jesus and say, Jesus, use them. I'm telling you, you won't talk about a proud moment. I could care less if Connor ever hit a home run. He sang about Jesus last week. And I'm sitting over there thinking, well, praise the Lord. Man, I was just weeping and wailing that my kids are being used of the Lord. What a blessing. That ain't, that's not me. That's God. But that's what happens when you give your children back to Him. God, here they are. God, use them. What if, you're, what if God wants your child to be used? What if it's your child that He wants to call to preach? What if it's your child that He wants to be a teacher, an evangelist? What if it's your child? But what if you rob Him of that because you're not willing to lay your children down. One thing about my mom and dad, early on in my life, they laid their children down at the altar and said, God, here they are. Mom and daddy, have you ever gone to the altar together and said, God, here they are? I can't worry about them anymore. I'm putting them in your hands. I can't fret over them anymore. Here they are. You watch over them. I can't go with them in the hallways of the school, but bless God, the Holy Spirit of God can I can't go and baby them every time. I'm telling you, you want to talk about a mama bear, there's a mama bear. But mama bear can't be there 24 hours a day, but the sweet Holy Spirit of God can. When's the last time you just fell on your face and said, God, here they are. Take them, watch over them, put a hedge about them, bless them, use them, save them, redeem them. God, here they are. You know what that means? I'm getting out of your way, Lord. And I'm going to let you be the Lord of their life. Have you give your kids back to Jesus? Have you give your kids back to Jesus? Now notice the last one. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Notice what he said in verse 28. And he worshiped the Lord there. You say, who was that preacher? I believe that was young Samuel. Here mama came, three years old in the area, however old he was. She came, brought him to the temple... And there he began to worship. Let me tell you that he didn't have a choice whether or not he was going to go to the temple because mama drug him. But he had a choice of what he was going to do when he got there. And I'm going to tell you this. My kids don't have a choice when it comes time to church time. They don't have a choice of where they're going Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday night. They don't have a choice. But what they do when they get here between them and the Lord. I can't make them be saved. Their salvation is none of my business. If they worship the Lord, that's going to be them between them and God. But I'm telling you, they don't have a choice when it comes to church. Y'all ever had a drug problem as a kid? Mom and daddy drug you to death, to church. Every time the door is open, there was times, oh boy, man, if I ever get old enough, I'm running as fast as I can. I'll never go to church again. <laughs> I'm a preacher now. Boy, doesn't God have a personality? And we think, boy, you know, if we force our kids, they're going to resent us. They don't resent you for making them go to school. You have no problem saying, get out of bed and go to school. You don't have a problem saying, get out of, get out of bed, it's time for practice. Lord, have mercy. Get them to Sunday school. Get them to the church house. I love to hear this. Well, they're grounded. They can't come to church right now. Lord, have mercy. I can't. Connor's salvation ain't none of my business. But where he is at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning is my business. It is my business. And I'm going to tell you something. 
I didn't get saved for him. He got saved on his own. His salvation is between him and the Lord. And the salvation of your children between you and the Lord. But I'm telling you, they're going to have a better chance for them being saved if they're at the church house than any other place in the world. And if you want your children to get saved, you want your children to know what it is to be a Christian, then show them and lead them. Amen. Don't just drop them off at the church house and say, train them up. You join in with us and let's train them together. Amen. Oh, what a blessing. He worshiped. He worshiped. What a blessing that when you raise your kids right, that they worship and they serve the Lord on their own choice, on their own desire. Who cares how much money they make? There would be nothing better in this life to my heart if them kids served the Lord. And if they would just love Jesus, I don't care if they have all the, decree, all the degrees that this society can offer. If they would just wake up every day and fall in love with Jesus Christ over and over. And Jesus will guide them and lead them and protect them. I don't want them falling in love with the world. I want them to fall in love with the ways of the Bible and with God. And I'm telling you, that's on me. And there's going to come a day, and I don't even want to think about it. They're going to leave the house. Some of y'all have already been there. And you say, preacher, I raised them in church. And they won't even come now. I showed them what was right, but they won't come now. Mama, daddy, don't you give up. What they do with the Lord is between them and the Lord. If you raised them right, you have nothing to worry about. Because there's a promise that one day they'll come back to it. There's a promise that one day they'll come back to it. And I know you're impatient, and I know you could grab them by the neck and just wring them. You know better. Oh, I'm glad my mom and dad didn't quit praying for me. I knew better. And when I got in the hog pen of sin, you know what? There was a conviction in me. Because they had pressed this biblical Bible on me, and I knew right from wrong. Oh, man, the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And it seemed like the more my mama prayed, the more the Lord just cut me to the heart. I couldn't run off. <laughs> it hurt. But I'm glad that God gave me two parents that loved him. That loved him. Mama and Daddy, have you given your children back to the Lord? Man, I've had some great times in my life, but two of the most rejoicing times that I've ever had is the day that two of my three babies fell on their face and accepted Jesus for their own. And I'll never forget the night that Connor come up here and he fell down. I, I wanted to save him, but only Jesus could. But he got Jesus for his own. One day Kennedy's going to come along. Good Lord willing. She made her in a rattlesnake is what I tell her all the time. But one day she's going to get it. Coach calls it wasn't long ago. You were shouting and rejoicing. All three of them got saved. Man, what a blessing. What a blessing. Mama, Daddy, have you gone to the altar and said, Jesus, here they are. Maybe you're here this morning and you've never been saved. May I introduce you to the greatest person in all the world. Jesus and Him crucified. He'll save you, redeem you, and buy you this morning. If you humble yourself, you need to be saved, come. You need to join this church? Come on and ask everybody to stand.